Lord Shipping, that's wonderful. It's a joy and a blessing to have you here at Faith Baptist Church. So you see everyone, have a seeing all your faces. Hope you everything was okay. We're going to start the service by standing up. We're going to start the service by standing up. And I want to sing song number one, How Great the Lord. I request everyone to stand on your feet, please, as we start our own service. I want to sing song number one, How Great the Lord. And the Lord has been great to us. Amen? Amen. All right, I want to sing How Great the Lord, song number one. How Great the Lord. Oh Lord my God, when I Thy path through all the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great the one, how great the Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great the Lord, how great the Lord. And when I think about verse number two. God is sad of sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can understand that on the cross my body gladly bearing, he bled and died. my sin then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when Christ shall come, we shall overcome nation. And take me home, amen. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall come in humble adoration and there proclaim how great thou, great thou Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Wonderful singing.
I'm going to lead the next song here, John chapter 3, verse 16, a song we probably, or verse that we know well, but a song to go with it, just a chorus here. We'll sing it through two times, and then we'll get to our opening prayer this morning. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary, from sin to set me free, someday he's coming back, what glory that will be, wonderful his love to me. Now some people sing it. What glory that will be. But I couldn't really sing that high this early, so I went down. So you can go either way. Yes, Becky can sing it high for us. So let's try that song one more time. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary from sin set me free. Someday he's coming back. What glory that will be. Wonderful his love to me. Let's do that one more time. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary, from sin to set me free, someday he's coming back, what glory that will be, wonderful his love to Looking forward to his return. We're going to study more about that today in our message. As we come to our opening prayer, our mission's focus today is on Truth Radio in Mbali, 105.3, and we're able to partner with them by buying electricity for their studio. And uh, they, they don't sell adverts. Everything they do is just to get the gospel and the message of God's word out. And so we're thankful for their ministry there, a ministry of Mbali Independent Baptist Church and Pastor John Basolo and uh, Brother Michael Chivumbi leading that radio ministry. So be praying for them this week especially. They're our focus. We also want to remember uh, here in our community, uh, in our country, I should say, uh, those that are affected with Ebola, the health workers, let's be praying for them, uh, for God's protection on the health workers especially. I read this week that one of the doctors from Tanzania that had come uh, to help with the Ebola issue has passed away. Uh, so let's be praying for the health workers, be praying for the Ministry of Health and our community leaders in, uh, we don't want another lockdown, uh, but we don't want Ebola to be spreading. And just uh, rejoicing, we're thankful for the, the birthdays that Tanzania and Nigeria celebrated recently. I think our Nigerians are in the other room today, but uh, uh, happy birthday to Nigeria and Tanzania next week. Uh, we'll be hours here in Uganda. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. But let me invite Brother uh, Biru Joseph to come and lead us in our opening prayer today. Let's sum ourselves and we pray. Devil Father, I want to say thank you for this time. Thank you for the privilege to be in your house. Lord, I want to say thank you for the, uh, thank you for the radio that is ministering in Bali, for all the workers in that radio. Lord, Father, thank you for... Uh, what they're doing, spreading the gospel throughout Mbale and throughout all parts of Uganda. The Lord Father, may you continue giving them the courage and understanding and knowledge to be able to continue spreading your word. Lord Father, I want to thank you for the birthdays in Nigeria and Tanzania. The Lord Father, we pray that uh, thank you for whatever you're doing. And Father, we pray for the service this morning and for the preaching of your word. The Lord be with the preach of your word, fill him with your Holy Spirit to, to teach what you want him to teach and help us to open our hearts to your word this morning. We say thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. And uh, we'll go to song number four. 
uh, one day, uh, looking forward to that one day when Jesus Christ is coming back. So let's sing this song together. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glory. Day. I think most of us are used to the other version, which is fine, but it's good to learn this one as well. Let's sing verse 2. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on the tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Living He loved me, dying He saved me. Buried He carried my sins far away. Rising He justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Let's think about this chorus. In his life, he showed us his love. That he would come and live on this earth as a human being. In his death, he saved us. Because the wages of sin is what, church? Death. Jesus died to pay for our sins so we could be saved. But he didn't stay dead, hallelujah. He carried our sins far away and rose again, justifying us forever. Because he's alive, he defeated death, he defeated hell, he defeated Satan, he defeated sin, and we can live freely forever. But he didn't stop there. One day, he's coming back for us. So that will be a glorious day. Let's sing about his resurrection on verse 3. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended my Lord evermore. Living he loved dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glory a glorious day. I'm ready for it. I'm looking forward to his return, but looking forward to what he has for us here in the meantime. And so that leads right into our announcements, what's coming up soon. And you can be aware of all these things, several things today. Discipleship. If you'd like to begin discipleship groups, a discipleship lesson, or if you're in a group, if you need the next lesson, we do have people ready to teach those lessons today. Please uh, we'll plan to meet in the overflow room for those discipleship classes right after the main service today. And uh, those are no charge for the class. If you want the photocopies, those are free. If you want the printed book, there is a small uh, cost for the book, but the classes are free. And that will start today again, right after our main service. Just go to the, the other, uh, the overflow room. You can ask the ushers and they can connect you uh, to that class. 
Then uh, this month at 9.30, Emily, would you turn down the handheld just slightly for me, please? Uh, this month, our Bible study is at 9.30. We have a marriage class here and the singles class next door and had some good discussion in our marriage class today. And I know next week that will continue. Good practical things. The singles, I heard some volume out of you today a little bit. So uh, hopefully you, I trust your class went well also. So 9.30 every Sunday morning this month. This coming Saturday is our men's prayer team, 10 o'clock. All the men are invited to come at 10 a.m. We'll have some coffee, tea, some mandazis or donuts, and then spend some good time in prayer, uh, sharing with one another and praying for one another. And then if you're able to remain, we'll clean the church, but the main focus is our prayer time. I hope you'll be here Saturday at 10. Uh, then this, this month, and I didn't bring my book, um, this month uh, we started last Tuesday a uh, uh, series on decisions. Let me grab my book. Book. Um, several pages, 10 week study. And last Tuesday, everybody who came got a free book. This offer is extended one more Tuesday. Isn't that a great deal? So you can come this week. Everyone who comes this week, this is the last week, they'll be free. Then they're 2 5. That's the cost of each book. Uh, but come 5 30 Tuesday. Everyone who comes by this week, I'll give you a free book uh, to finish out the class. And it'll be 10 weeks on Tuesdays, 5 30 till about 6 15. But really, some great lessons. This past Tuesday was kind of an introduction to the whole series. And we'll be building on that this week and in the coming weeks. So if you missed last Tuesday, you can still catch up. Um, and if uh, so, I really encourage you to be here Tuesday at 530 p.m. Uh, next Sunday, Independence Day, Uganda turns 60 years. I think that's a mosaic now, right? At 60. Uh, so we are encouraging you to wear chitenge. It is not required. You are free. It's Independence Day. You can free to wear uh, other things, but if you'd like to wear Chitenge, I think it would be a nice time for us uh, to show our, our uh, celebration of our country for these 60 years uh, by wearing Chitenge next Sunday, uh, 9th of October. And so we'll be remembering Uganda's have a special message on the freedom and being free and, and the independence, but the freedom really that we have in Christ Jesus. So I encourage you, if you have Somebody who doesn't normally attend church, maybe they'd be willing to attend for that Independence Day service. And so we'll plan for that next Sunday. Our song of the month, I didn't post this last week, I'm sorry, but it is still online. Uh, Behold Our God, you can listen to a sample at www.faith.ug slash song every month. We update that. We'll be singing it in our service today and every Sunday this month in October. Great song. Uh, I get excited. I, Every time I hear it, I, I actually get tears in my eyes every time I hear this song, just about uh, I'll try to hide today as we're singing so nobody laughs at me. But anyway, uh, it's just a great song thinking about our Savior. Uh, the last Saturday of this month, we have five Saturdays in October. So this is church-wide service day, cleaning at church. Everyone who's able to come at 10 a.m. on that Saturday will be working together to get the church there's some things that just need to be done every so often. And so every, about every three months, we have five Saturdays, and that'll be our opportunity. So mark that down on your calendar, Saturday the 29th at 10 a.m. And then uh, our tithes and offerings, you can put in the uh, giving box here by the door. And uh, we're grateful for your faithfulness there. Don't forget our missions giving. That's been a little bit down last month. We can make that up this month. If you're visiting with us today, we're glad you're here. If this is your first time, I know we have several first timers. If this is your first time visiting with us, would you just raise your hand and wave so we can wave back at you? Thank you. And uh, glad that you're here. And so uh, if you did not get a visitor card this morning, uh, please see one of the ushers. And we'd love to have your contacts. We can send you a message thanking you for being here. Uh, so please get one of those and, and give that to us by the end of the service. But let's stand together and we'll greet one another for just a few minutes and then we'll continue with our service today. Choir, we'll be singing so you can coordinate in the uh, choir room.
invite the choir to come and minister to us in song, so we pray that this will be a blessing to you as they sing about the goodness of Jesus. wonderful singing appreciate that the goodness of our lord jesus christ the lord is good amen, amen. 
He has done marvelous things and great things in our life. Above all, he died for us on the cross. And we can trust in him in every situation, in every problem we have in life. Jesus is always good and he's always there for us. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to sing our first song, Jesus Paid It All. You can be seated for this song, Jesus Paid It All. Song number four. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Think about verse number two. For nothing good of I whereby thy grace to claim I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb Stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all. All to I'm so glad that Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. Amen. Amen. He did not pay a half. He paid completely that sacrifice that was needed for us. It's time for our scripture reading. I'll ask you to stand with me and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. If you need to borrow a Bible this morning, you just raise your hand. We'll be happy to loan one to you. Thank you, Brother Joseph. Ephes or not Ephesians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we'll read from verse 9 up to verse 11. 1 Thessalonians 5, we'll be looking at uh, the bulk of the first half of this chapter today, but our reading today from verse 9 up to verse 11. The Bible tells us, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. We find comfort in this message and we can encourage and comfort each other. And we'll be learning about that today in our series uh, on one another, comforting one another. Our song of the month, just introduce it here, Behold Our God. And really when we think about the God of the universe, though he's our personal friend and our personal savior, he's an amazing God. And, and it starts off with these questions, who has held the ocean in his hands? Not like some drops, but the whole world. Who has numbered every grain of sand? He knows them all. 
Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to rejoice. And then the chorus says, Behold our God seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our God. Nothing can compare. What an amazing God we have. Let us adore him. So I hope you've come with that heart of adoration. We'll look at another verse another week. But our God is the almighty God. We cannot compare to him in our wisdom and our understanding, definitely not in our power. So let's uh, sing this together. I'll invite Brother Joseph to come back and lead us in our song of the month. Amen. How many of us are happy learning a new song every month? Only one hand up. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we're going to learn this be our uh, new song for the month. Behold our God. And um, we'll, you first have to hear it. I don't know if some of you have heard it, but um, we'll sing it. And I will just request you to hear, to listen to how it goes like. And if maybe you heard it somewhere before, you can join me. And we sing it together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who has held the ocean in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to Behold our God seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore So that's how it is, uh, the first verse, so that's the tune. So if you can listen to the tune, then I believe it will help to, you'll be able to follow up. And so I know my voice is a bit low, <laughs> but um, I know it's just helpful. At least if you get to hear the tune, it's more helpful as more as we keep on singing. So let's try verse number two. Who has given counsel to the Lord? Question any of his words. Who can teach the one who knows all things? Who can fathom all his wondrous deeds? Behold, I Number three. Who has felt the nails upon his hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man? God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus Savior. Seated on his throne, come let us. 
Wonderful, excellent. Welcome, Pastor Dan. Thank you. Thank you. May be seated. But I, I, I can't imagine singing that song just sit down, relaxed. Our God, you know, when somebody important comes, a president, a king, you stand out of respect, and our God is worthy of that. What an awesome God we have. I'm thankful that he's brought us together this morning and, and we're continuing our series on one another and today looking at this topic of comforting one another, comforting one another, and uh, life has challenges, doesn't it? We, we have problems, we have challenges, and we're told here in, in 1 Thessalonians to comfort one another. In fact, 1 Thessalonians 4 ends with that same message he says wherefore comfort one another with these words could you turn this mic down a little bit also i had it cleaned back there and i turned things up a little bit too high sorry for that first thessalonians chapter 5 but i'm going to go back to verse 18 of chapter 4 wherefore comfort one another with these words and the context there is of christ's coming back for us So by way of introduction this morning, as we think about Christ's return, we think about the comfort. As God's children, we can be comforted that the challenges in this life are temporary. Uh, I I heard of some students that had an, an exam coming up and they weren't ready for the exam and they just said, pray Jesus comes before Monday. Uh, Sometimes life is like like that, isn't it? There are these challenges that come. So how does Christ's return comfort us? And how do we as believers comfort one another with the reminder of Jesus' return? I read about a pastor who was busy preparing his Sunday sermon. It it takes time to study and, and prepare and to really make sure we've understood the message of the Word of God to be able to share it. And this pastor was busy and studying and he had a young daughter that came and said, Daddy, can you come and play? And he said, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I I really need to finish this this preparation for my sermon. Maybe sermon, maybe in an hour I can come and play. And so she said, okay, when you're finished, Daddy, I'm going to give you a great big hug. And she turned to go. But as she got to the door, She turned around, ran back, and gave him this big, bone-breaking hug, as much as a four-year-old can give, anyway. And he said, sweetheart, I thought you said you were going to give me a hug after I finished. And she answered, daddy, I just wanted you to know what you have to look forward to. (laughs) You know, through the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the encouragement of the body of Christ, God has given us each other so that we can remember what we have to look forward to when we will be in His presence forever. And we should be that example to one another of the comfort and the encouragement that we have in Jesus Christ. So as we look in 1 Thessalonians 5 today, we need confidence, we need caution, and we need comfort as we consider Christ's return. So let's jump right in here in in, uh, chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. And we need first to be confident of Christ's return. Be confident. Be sure. Be knowing. Be confident that Christ is coming back. 1 Thessalonians 5, from verse 1 to 5, Paul writes, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, You have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace, safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye 
are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. I'm thankful that we're not in darkness. We have been given the light of the gospel of Christ. Let's pray as we start this message today. Father, we thank you for the Bible that is our source of truth, our source of light. It's a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. It tells us of Jesus Christ, who is the light that came into the world. But sadly, men have loved darkness rather than light. Father, I pray this morning, we who are in the light, we would walk in the light and glorify You, that we would comfort one another as we learn from Your Word today. And I pray for those that are still in darkness, that they would receive the grace of God, the light, that lighteth every man that cometh into the world is what you've told us in the Bible. That light is available for each one. May they receive it today is our prayer. So we ask that you would bless this time, that you would speak through me the message you want us to hear, not what's in my mind. I pray for the children in their class that you would bless their lesson as well, that they would learn of your love and trust Christ as their Savior. We pray that you would strengthen us and comfort us so that we also can comfort others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here in chapter 5, verse 1, we can be confident of Christ's return. Jesus is coming again. Of that we are sure. And He says it's going to happen suddenly as a thief in the night when it's not necessarily expected. It may be today that He's coming back. In, uh, in 2 Peter... 2 Peter chapter 3, let me just read for you these two verses. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Uh, Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for the new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. We're looking for that. We could read that whole chapter of 2 Peter to get more context there. But Jesus is coming again. And as we sang earlier, what a glorious day that will be because He's coming for His bride. Some of you can think to the time that you went for your introduction or for your wedding. And especially the wedding, it's always awkward for the groom when he's standing at the front and he's there with the pastor and he's just waiting, right? Right? And then, you know, the flower girls come and the bridesmaids and the groomsmen, but you don't care about any of those people. There's one that you're looking for. And you're waiting. And I don't know why it is, but at the wedding, the steps have to be, you know, like three hours. Three hours, not three kilometers per hour, three hours per kilometer. I don't know what it is. And you're waiting and you're like, just come here, we go. But uh, that's kind of how it is for Christ's return. He's coming for us and we don't know when and and sometimes it feels like it's going to take forever. But honestly, once she gets to the front and the Father puts that hand and you say, I do, she does, and you kiss, hey, that's from there on, who cares how long it took, right? It's done. We're together. Hallelujah. And that's the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming again. And He's, going to come. he's not going to come with these steps when He comes. It's going to be, He has come. And it will be in a moment. I, I'm just going to really quickly give an overview of where, where things are going in the future. Right now, uh, we are in what we call the church age. This began, I don't know if you can see this very well, uh, but it began with Christ's ascension, the start of the church. We're in the church age, and that's been going on now for 2,000 years. I don't know how long it will continue, but the next thing on, on, uh, on God's calendar is what we call the rapture, where believers are caught up with Him in the clouds. And uh, then while we are with Him in the heavens, we are called the bride of Christ. We'll be with Christ there in the clouds. But He's also going to be judging the earth during this time of tribulation. And uh, following the tribulation, Christ comes back to the earth. He judges the world. 
During that tribulation, there's a beast and a false prophet that are ruling with the Antichrist and they are cast into the lake of fire. And then there's a, a short period of about 75 days uh, that continues on um, where there's the resurrection of those that died during the tribulation. And then Satan is bound for 1,000 years. Boy, that's going to be a great time. You know, when Satan is bound for 1,000 years, that's called the millennial reign. We are going to rule and reign with Jesus on this earth. But after a thousand years, the devil is released. There's a final battle with God. And then Satan is again cast into, uh, cast into the fire, the lake of fire. And then there's a great white throne judgment with, the, uh, with the, those that have not accepted Christ as Savior. They are judged and condemned to the lake of fire. And then God creates a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. That's what we read about briefly in 2 Peter. All this is coming in the future, and it's still a long way off, over a thousand years in the future. But Christ's return is near compared to that. It's the next thing on God's prophecy calendar. And for us, we're looking next Sunday is Independence Day, and then we have Christmas coming and then New Year's. The next thing on God's calendar is Christ coming back. And then all of these other events will take place in the future. But through all of them, notice this, through, through all of these events, we are with Him. We had our marriage class today and we talked about two becoming one. And, and you spend your life as one being, working and serving and, and ministering together. And everything that happens in that future, once Christ returns, we are together with Him. Now let me ask you, is there any situation He can't handle? He can handle every situation. And He is already with us in spirit. And we are seated with Him. But physically we'll be with Him at that time. But just as much as we look forward to that time when physically we'll be with Him, right now, spiritually, He is with us. So let me ask you, is there any situation right now that He can't handle? No, He can handle every situation. He has a purpose for everything. So we can be comforted that the, the challenges of this life, they are temporary. One day we will be with Him. Eventually Satan will be bound and we will forever be with the Lord. Now when you think of 60 trillion years in the future, one day on this earth seems like nothing, right? If we think of the national budget, what is it, like 35 trillion shillings? And if we say, no, 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 that's, that's too much. You need to reduce the budget so they remove 500 shillings. Have they really reduced the budget? 500 shillings. But compared to 35 trillion, it's as if they reduced by nothing, right? So if we have 500 years, uh, now we're not going to live 500 years in this body. But even if we lived 500 years and they were difficult years, compared to 35 trillion years in the future, 500 is nothing. Our time here, it's very short. We have the comfort that we'll forever be with the Lord. And the Bible says here in 1 Thessalonians 5 that we who have believed, we are children of light. We're the children of light, not of darkness. We have, we have seen that light. Um, and that light that has come. Now, first, 2 Corinthians 4 tells us that Satan is blinding the minds of them that believe not. And what does it mean to be blind? It means the eyes can't see. So if the eyes can't see, they don't realize what's there. He's blinded them so they don't see the light of the Gospel, the glorious Gospel of Christ. That's why He's put us here to help people see who Jesus is. To show them that comfort. Satan is blinding their minds with promises of peace. Notice what we see in verse 3. They shall say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction. The promises of this world of peace and of safety, they will fail. They will fail, but God's promises will never fail. Governments, agencies, organizations cannot guarantee peace and safety. 
But our peace and our confidence is in Jesus Christ. He will return. The earth will be destroyed. There will be a new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem where we will live where there's no sin, where there's no death, there's no sorrow, there's no pain. That is the future. We can be confident and that hope, that confidence gives us comfort. So first, be confident of Christ's return. But secondly, this morning, we need to be cautious. Be cautious of His return. Verse 6 tells us, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. First thing we see in verse 6 is that we need to watch. He says, be sober, be aware. On Tuesday, we began that study on having a sober mind, being alert, being aware of what is happening. And that's one of the necessary parts of making good decisions, having a sober mind. But we need to be alert, not just idle, not just complacent, relaxed, but aware of what is happening around us. Let us watch and be sober. But secondly, there's a warning be saved. They that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. In context of what we're reading, the unsaved are in darkness. If you've not come to the light, there is a warning for you. See, God, when we think about God, we sang about behold our God. Our God is holy. Our God is just. Our God is life. Our God is light. Our God is uh, love, our God is truth. So when someone rejects God, they're not just rejecting Him as God, they're rejecting truth, they're rejecting life, they're rejecting light, they're rejecting hope, they're rejecting love, they're rejecting peace, they're rejecting justice. So if I'm rejecting that, automatically I'm choosing the other, right? If I'm rejecting truth, what am I choosing? lies. If I'm rejecting light, I'm choosing darkness. If I'm rejecting life, I'm choosing death. God respects our choices. If you reject God's gift of life, He's saying you are automatically choosing death and darkness and hell. I didn't make that for you. But if that's what you choose, I will respect your choice. Titus chapter 2 tells us the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It is available. Jesus is described as the light that came into the world and lighteth every man that comes into the world. All have been given the light, but not all respond to the light because men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. In, uh, right now, if we go back 80 years, it was the time of World War II. I don't remember that time. I I'm, I'm not that old. Uh, uh, I don't know anyone here who was alive at that time. But during World War II, it began with Germany, other countries came in, Italy, and then Japan was the final country really holding on, fighting against... Uh, Japan was the Axis powers fighting against the allied powers of, of uh, the U.S., the U.K., Russia. Um, I don't remember the other countries, that, but the rest of the world fighting against Japan, who was really, it was an unnecessary war at that point. It was useless. And the, the rest of the world basically was united against Germ J Japan at the close of that war. And the atomic bomb had been developed. And as they were preparing to drop that bomb, there were, bomb, there were leaflets that were first dropped. Pamphlets, flyers that would come down with pictures of airplanes with bombs and writing in Japanese. And it said, read this carefully as it may save your life or the life of a relative or friend. In the next few days, the military installations of some or all of the cities named on this paper will be destroyed by bombs. These cities contained military installations and workshops or factories which produce military goods. 
we are determined to destroy all the tools of the military which they are using to prolong this useless war. But unfortunately, our bombs have no eyes. We do not wish to injure innocent people. We now give you warning to evacuate the cities named and save your lives. We are not fighting the Japanese people, but the military in this useless war. Act at once or we shall employ the atomic bomb and all our other superior weapons to promptly and forcefully end the war. Evacuate your cities. They said, our battle isn't with you. But if you choose to go where the military is building their bombs, you will suffer for choosing to be there. We are warning you, flee your cities. And we know it took two bombs and then the war was over. They ended very quickly after that. So there is a warning here. God's war is not with people. God's war is against the devil. And He created hell and the lake of fire for the devil and his angels. It wasn't created for us. And He's saying, I've given you a way of escape. I'm giving you the warning. The light has come. The grace of God has appeared to all men. Be cautious. Be aware. Here's your warning. Be saved. God's desire is for all to be saved. So there's the warning there, and we as believers need to live in that light to share that warning with others. We need to be sober. We need to be saved. And then we need to wear the breastplate and the helmet that He tells us here in verse number 8. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. There's more discussion on this in Ephesians 6. We won't go there today. But just to summarize, when we wear this breastplate and the helmet, he's basically telling us two things. Number one, live righteously. Protect your heart. Have that breastplate of righteousness. It's, it's not a physical breastplate. But it's an armor there that says, I'm going to protect my heart. I'm not going to bring in these desires for wrong things, I need to have a heart for what's right. So protect your heart. But not only our heart, we need to protect our mind. That helmet. Think, hopefully, Jesus, You saved me. You loved me enough to die for me, to give me eternal life, so I'm going to protect my mind. I'm not going to be thinking about these other things that would defeat my hope. Part of our comfort that we have is reminding one another. That's what he said in 1 Thessalonians 4.18. And again, in, in chapter 5, verse 13, he says, comfort, I'm sorry, verse 11, he says, comfort one another. Comfort yourselves together. Edify one another. We need to be reminded what to think about. We can look at these problems. We can get discouraged. But we have a God who's in control of everything. And He allows things up to a certain point, but not beyond what He can use for His good and His glory. So things might seem out of control, but there are always boundaries to that. God is still working. So be sober. Be aware. Watch. Be warned. And then wear these things. And as we do that, we can be the comfort and we can receive comfort from others. We can be comforted because of His return. Verse 9 tells us, For God hath not appointed us to wrath. God's plan is not for us to suffer the lake of fire, the wrath of God that's going to come on the earth. He's given us the way of escape. That's through Jesus Christ. And we who have accepted Christ as our Savior will escape that. We are not appointed to wrath. We are first we see that we are protected from His wrath here in verse 9. Why is there wrath? Because there is a punishment for sin. For time, I won't turn there, but Revelation 6, in verses 12-17, to 17, tells us what's going to happen during that tribulation period when the men and kings of the earth are going to cry to the mountains, fall on us, hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. They just want to die, but they won't be able to die because they're suffering God's wrath, His punishment. Tribulation is judgment for sin on the earth. Why are we not part of that? 
Because our punishment was put on Jesus Christ. Our punishment, Jesus paid for that. Our judgment is in Christ. And so we are delivered from the wrath to come. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died our death. In His life is our life. And as the verse says, we should live together with Him. So we are protected from His wrath in verses 9 and 10, but then we're also comforted by His promise in verse 10 and 11. Comforted by His promise. He died for us so that we can live with Him. Because we'll live with Him, because we will escape that judgment that's on the earth, because we have been delivered from sin and wrath and the lake of fire, we have comfort. The problems of this world are nothing like the problems that the world has in its future. And whatever suffering we have here, it's as bad as it will ever get for us. Everything in the future for us is glorious. It's perfect. It is sinless. It is painless. But for those without Christ, this world is as good as it gets. Everything in the future is worse. It is wrath. It is judgment and punishment. So comfort here. When he tells us in verse 11 to comfort yourselves together, it's the same Greek word that's used to describe the Holy Spirit as our comforter, the encourager, the one to come alongside and stand with us to strengthen ourselves. So we are to stand together. Hey, when somebody in our church has a challenge, a problem, we can stand together. And I appreciate how our church members do that, our church family. Our earthly problems are only temporary. Is that good news? The earth earth is temporary, therefore, earthly problems are temporary. When you go to work, are there problems in the office sometimes? That's why you look forward to the weekend, right? Because when you leave office on Friday, you leave the problems behind, at least till Monday, right? Unless you have to work on Saturday or Sunday afternoon, I'm sorry. But when you leave office, you leave the problems there. We are going to leave this world to be with Christ. And all these problems go away. These are temporary. Our earthly problems are temporary. Our earthly problems do have a good purpose. Even if we don't know what it is, they have a good purpose. And our earthly problems, notice this, our problems are not a problem for our Savior. They're not a problem for Him. And sometimes what we think is a problem is actually a blessing. There have been times that I plan to board a vehicle and then I realize I missed that vehicle and I'm annoyed, I'm disappointed, I have to use a different means, but I found out that vehicle got a problem on the way. So was my problem really a problem? No. It seemed like a problem, but it was really a blessing. God was protecting me from another problem. And if we can view our challenges in the light that God is doing good things, we can be comforted. But he also tells us that the unbelievers that are causing problems, they will be judged. There's a need for justice, right? Aren't you glad there's justice in courts? All wrong will be dealt with justly. And those that are causing problems, those that are evil in their intentions, either they will accept Christ as Savior and Jesus will pay for their sins and change their heart, or they will pay for their sins. Because the wages of sin, as we said earlier, the wages of sin is death. Whether it is the worst sin that you can think of or the smallest sin that we can think of, can you imagine a, if we, we talked about the atomic bombs, can you, can you imagine a small atomic explosion? I mean, does that make sense? When you think of an atom bomb, it's, can it cause small damage? Even the smallest thing, just exposure to the radiation can kill you, even if it doesn't explode. So our sin is like that atomic bomb that is causing damage. Oh, it's just a small atomic, no. Every sin is destructive. 
and it will be judged either in Jesus Christ or in the lake of fire. God will deal with those that don't accept Him. There is a punishment for them. The unsaved, the unbelievers who cause earthly problems will be judged. The saved who cause earthly problems will be disciplined. Sin has already been judged at the cross. So as we studied last week, we can't forgive. But Pastor Dan, you don't know what they did to me. No, but I know what Jesus did for them. And I know what Jesus did for me and did for you. I can trust Him to deal with them. I can trust Him to judge their sin or to forgive their sin because He took the payment. I can trust Him to do that. We sang last month, our song of the month, I will trust my Savior Jesus. Even when trusting Him seems the hardest thing, I can trust my Savior Jesus. We can trust Him and that gives us comfort. So let me ask you today, do you have comfort? I'm sorry, let me just skip over those points. Do you have comfort? Do you have the comfort of salvation? Have you accepted the grace of God that leads to salvation and accepted Christ as your Savior? If not, you can receive that gift today. It's His gift. It's not a gift of Faith Baptist Church or Pastor Dan. It's the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We'd be happy to show you how you can receive that gift today. If you have received that gift, are you anxious in this world? Take comfort that God is in control, that this is temporary and there's no problem He can't handle. But lastly this morning, are you ready for Christ's return? Are you looking for His coming that I I want you to find me ready, not wandering in these other things. I want to protect my heart with that breastplate. I want to protect my mind with that helmet so I'm not caught up in the sinful things of this world. Be comforted this morning. God is in control. Jesus is coming back. The question is, will He come as your Savior or as your judge? Will you stand with me as we close this morning? Will you stand with me as we consider this passage and the comfort that He offers? Have you received His comfort, His payment, His acceptance? If not, I urge you to do that today. Heavenly Father, I thank You for Jesus Christ who died for all our sins. Every sin of mine and every sin of every person here, every person outside, He he bore them. He became sin for us, nailing them to His cross. He paid the price and He's given us the receipt and the Word of God to show that it's paid, but still many refuse to receive what He's paid for. They don't accept it to their account. They are still walking in darkness. And You show us that if we reject You, We have chosen the alternative. It's not that You send anyone to hell, but You do respect their choice. So Father, I pray for those here this morning that have never accepted that Christ's death on the cross has paid completely for their sin. That You would give them that understanding, give them courage to to come and see from the Word of God how they can receive that gift. For we who have received it, may we take comfort that You're coming again for us. You've not left us here abandoned. You've given us Your Holy Spirit and You've given us one another. And we can look forward to that day that we can embrace You and be physically in Your presence. (coughs) But Father, until then, may we be reminded, may we be the reminder to one another of what we have to look forward to. May we as the body of Christ be His hands to embrace one another. Be His feet to go and stand and walk alongside one another. May we be His mouth to speak the words of encouragement and blessing to one another. Even the words of admonition when needed. Father, may we as the body of Christ 
be the comfort that we each need from one another to remind us of what we have to look forward to when Christ comes for us, our bridegroom, our Savior. Thank you for not leaving us alone, but giving us yourself through your Holy Spirit and giving us this body, this family of God. May we be that comfort to others, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you